Um, good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for coming tonight at the Asia Society. Uh, thank you to uh, Rachel Cooper. Where is she? Oh, yeah, yes, for finally getting me here and with my collaborators, with Oki and Jessica. Thank you to the Asia Society who has been working since um, eight months with me, um, to Sarah and, and to Pune. Uh Tonight I would like to share, uh, first of all, I apologize with my English, uh, but I try my best and with uh, my recovering from uh, jet lag, <laughs> I, hope, I hope I still can speak properly tonight. Um, I come from a small town, an old town, which is called uh, Solo or Surakarta. is a uh, very central, uh, like the central of a Javanese uh, culture that uh, has an old uh, history of the Mataram kingdom, like the, the first kingdom, uh, that it has a, st a strong structure as a kingdom in Java. And um, it's a very old town that um, many of the classical Javadis uh, dance and gamelan uh, are centered around this area. Beside Yogyakarta, of course, another, another bigger uh, uh, town with with uh, um, a bigger kingdom now that has a special. It's called a special region because their participation for the Indonesian independence in the 1945. So our king in Solo was not joining the. Uh, the government, but they, they are friends of the Dutch, so we don't get the special region <laughs> title. <laughs> anyway, so um, Solo and Jogja um, um, surrounded by temples, like Hindu temples, Buddha tem Buddhist temples that uh, are built between the 8th century to the 14th centuries. So there are a lot of uh, syncretic uh, uh, spiritual practices and re and true religions, or the original um, uh, beliefs of of uh, Javanese beliefs or Javanese uh, spiritual that is uh, more connected with uh, now mysticism, which I think is not always about mysticism. So um, I will. Tell a little bit. Uh, I studied. I grew up in Solo. My parents are artists too. My my mother was a dancer. My father is a movement teacher. He, he is teaching movement, and um, he's an artist, and he's still teaching. <laughs> he's um, and and I am also uh, like from my mother's family. They are. Uh, gamelan musicians, like the, the traditional Javanese orchestra musician. Um, so I grew up also in the environment of um, the art of artists, of dancers, because my parents were working also at the um, art academy or at the culture, central culture of central Java. And um, I danced since I was a child. I learned Javanese dance. I was sent to uh, Tai Chi uh, exercise. Uh, uh, my teacher is a Javanese man. His name is Sunario. And uh, he learned Tai Chi because he was put in a jail during the um, 1965 um, uh, incident with the communism. And he was suspected to be part of the party, my party member. So he learned from a Chinese uh, Tai Chi uh, teacher at the jail. And so when he got out of the jail for after many years, and he continued teaching Tai Chi. And uh, I learned also from uh, Javanese dance from a 
Ngaliman Chondro Pengrawit, who was also part of the um, um, Lekra, like the artist, the Communist Artist Association, who was for many years uh, for, forbidden to teach um, in the public. So we were learning from him at the backyard of someone in our neighborhood. Um, all this influence uh, coming to me that was not to make me as to become an artist. I finished my high school, I went to Bandung, I studied uh, international relations and politics. Uh, I joined the student demonstration in the uh, end of the 80s. Um, I joined the underground uh, student uh, association and um, but I, I left uh, in 1994 before the, um, before the regime was uh, defeated by, you know, like um, before the reformation, was, we would say. <clears throat> I went to Germany and I started studying art at the Braunschweig School of Art. Uh, at that time, actually, I met Ansu Furukawa. Uh, she is a Bhutto choreographer who, whose career becoming big in Europe. So she started, of course, uh, from Japan, and then she moved. Uh, she, she, her project uh, uh, happened a lot in, in Europe, and she became a professor in my school. So Antu Furukawa's Bhutto is very special that, uh, um, that brings... Uh, the body into a kind of uh, library and uh, how to to unveil uh, stories or his stories from the body, how to understand our beings through the inner uh, constellation and the the uh, and our surroundings. Antu Furukawa was of course the bigger uh, the biggest my biggest influence in thinking and who encouraged me to to become an artist actually she passed away in year uh, 2001 my second professor who is uh, influencing me a lot is of course Marina Abramovic after Antu Furukawa finished uh, teaching uh, co her teaching contract at, at the university, she, uh, her place was replaced by Marina Abramovic. I didn't know who Marina Abramovic was. I only knew that, <laughs> that uh, since she was there as a, as a new professor, and uh, I did not really, uh, really I did not follow her practice before or understood her practice before. I got really new. Uh, uh, with her, really know with her um, practice since I started from her. So um, there are other teachers, of course. There are um, Birgit Hein, uh, who introduced me into experimental films. There is, um, there was uh, Mara Matushka. Uh, she comes from uh, Vienna. Who encouraged me also like to work, like not only performance but also with mixed media. There, yeah, I think there is also Boris Nisloni, a performance artist from Köln, who is a member of the Black Market International Performance Art Group, who is also encouraging me to um, to to create a performance art laboratory or performance art festival in Indonesia. Um, <clears throat> my practice is, um, is traveling, <laughs> like it's changing since uh, the mid of, since my student time until now. It, I'm seeking for something that um, that art is not only to produce a something object or um, a choreography piece or 
or a performance piece. So I'm seeking something that art has a strong uh, meaning uh, to become a mean, to be closer to the people or to life. So I am not very... Uh, I think my relationship with the medium is also um, growing. Uh, I'm not only using my body, but I'm also dealing with, uh, now working since five years, uh, also with dancers. Uh, that means I have another task to understand how to borrow somebody else's body. So this, I need to be very, very careful, and because they are not my body, they have their own uh, containers, they have their own background, they have their own uh, history. So um, for me, that is very exciting because um, to become to to be a performance artist is always like mostly you perform alone. Mostly is very. Um, you are alone, you are traveling, you perform alone, you travel alone, <laughs> you think alone, everything, you do it alone, then you go back home alone. And sometimes you are really alone at home. So <laughs> I think uh, for, for many years, uh, it's, been, it's been a very long, lonely journey that, um, that is... Also, like a quality of, uh, how do you say, um, it's uh, this, this journey quality is is teaching me a lot how to be, uh, how to give my myself, my body back into my my uh, social surrounding. So that's why also I decide to go back and start making. Or creating activities or event or project in Indonesia uh, since 2007, and then definitely I I decided to go back and open my studio in 2012 um, because I need to be connected with people. I need to share a spirit of of learning of create creation with uh, um, with my my friends you know my artist fellow younger artist fellow in my hometown um, and I think for my um, capacity uh, solo my hometown is is uh, uh, real realizable yeah it's possible to 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 make it in Germany it is very difficult so um for me, um, this body has a very simple uh, construction, as it looks like. Um, luckily, I'm healthy until today, um, but it is always, uh, for me, in every part of the body is um, having a kind of a quality that contain a history, my genetic lines, my uh, even, you know, the disease that is genetically um, uh, transported. Yeah. But it also remembers, it also keep all happening or events. It leaves traces of the past it uh, becomes a source of of uh, thinking, of um, of inspiration, of um, something that is um, opening up into a new uh, kind of uh, uh, landscape. So the practice of Buto has brought me even deeper into the the world inside the body it's not about the uh, mm, about the presence of the body but how the body become how the body is able to be 
we becoming, it's becoming. When you perform, it's not you show something, but it's how you become. And I think it, it is a, a practice that is uh, diverse uh, a lot from, for example, when, when I dance traditional dance. Although we have also, in the traditional dance, we have the concept of taksu. The taksu is like the the center uh, aura or center presence or energy that is appearing during uh, the the presence in the presentation. So every taksu can be trained. This is how I also learned. From my from my school, it's not like in the traditional belief. Probably, taksu is given from the grandmother to the mother to and then to the daughter, and then you become uh, a good dancer. Probably, maybe it's not directly like because of the spirit is given, but uh, the belief or the skill or the way you breathe, the way you see, the way you move, the way you place yourself uh, is very precise and, 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 and learned. So the presence is very personal and very related to, to, the, to the how, how, what, what uh, the body contains. Uh, of course, um, as a cult there is a cultural body here in, in, in our body, I believe, that is related more with the environment, the social environment, the, uh, included also the economical environment, uh, the political environment, the history of our origin or, or of, of our surrounding. So, the uh, cultural body is moving, like not moving, uh, growing um, according to the environment where our body is living. So I experienced a lot through my migration to Europe, to Germany, and um, normally I did not ask about identity, about cultural identity, about cultural representation, um, because I've I've been living in in a comfort zone in my own culture. Once I migrate, and um, I realize that I'm different. Oh, my skin is totally different. Oh, I'm very small. Oh, why people look at me? down when they talk to me because they're, you know, this kind of so constant um, constant details of differences of uh, of questioning, of being questioned where I come from um, what kind of culture I come from, you know all in the daily life and also in the professional area then I'm, I was very, in, I become very interested uh, to understand what is a cultural identity, what is a national representation, what is, um, uh, you know, what what can we offer with this diversity? How can we relate within a diversity? Why cannot we just? becoming a universal member of, of this universe? Why do we have to understand borders? Why um, we, do we have to um, ad, ad, adapt uh, to other or, or different places? Um, I think uh, because of the constant um, challenge, I think, also events in my life that I learned from traveling and working, married, having family, child, you know, divorce. Everything is a kind of um, putting me into a certain uh, place where I can see again or reflect again, okay, um, 
as an artist uh, who is working and creating, uh, I cannot run away from the reality of life. So the, this kind of reality is very tricky because yeah, after so long studying and then you are um, <laughs> always like uh, asked, yeah, that's too personal. What do you want to to say to the society through your art? And this, you know, this kind of uh, questions that sometimes um, makes me a little bit slow in making. So in one year, I only produce one or two works. This year, three. <laughs> so, so this is a special year. Anyway, so. Um, I, I need some time to create something, to create a work that um, I feel then confidence to make or to present or to find the right um, medium uh, for it. For example, it could take me like seven years to, to make the work I'm a ghost in my own house uh, after my observation on uh, homeless people, homelessness, being homeless also, my, not being homeless, not without having a home, but not a feeling home at all. And so then it becomes a work that is a performance art for long durational, this 12 hours where I grinded my uh, charcoal for 12, 12 hours. Um. This is one of my last work from uh, 2017. It's called Transactions of Hollows, where I um, shoot arrows, 800 arrows uh, within two days uh, into a white wall. I'm talking about utopian world, how we uh, seek uh, or maintain our desire and seek for an, our ideal world, but we are actually, um, as a nature of human, we are never been satisfied for uh, where for our place for when we get there and we still want to have more. So. Most of the uh, uh, collective uh, purposes uh, through political uh, structure or social structure or even family structure uh, were put into somewhere far. And we are seeking to go there to keep our spirit uh, for li of life and, and to aim something that is like ecstatically uh, satisfying. But actually, maybe we are um, living in an illusion. I am uh, learning that uh, traditional art has a very strong position in my country, um, especially in the art world. But I, I don't feel I belong to the traditional culture. My um, daily life is not very much uh, engaged with the traditional uh, environment. But then I question also, very often, what does it mean to be traditional? <laughs> because I think um, it's part of the, uh, uh, how do you say, illusion, like to keep a traditional as a form, uh, kind of a preservation. Because tradition is not to be preserved, it's to be maintained, I think, rather than to put it like in a museum. 
but we are living. We are we are not living in the museum. We are living in the in a very lively life, <laughs> and people are changing. So I, I was tr- triggered to understand more uh, about my relationship with my tradition, and also the definition of Indonesian traditional art, the concept of a nation with. Um, thousands of different culture, different traditional uh, way of living, different um, background, language, and everything. So we are so diverse, but we were supposed to have a kind of understanding, understanding of Indonesia. So in the beginning of my career, I try not to I was like, really, I really want to avoid the label of representing my culture. Um, Of course, it's not easy because everybody is uh, like, when I perform, expecting something Indonesian. But why? (laughs) Why do you expect me to do like traditional dance or something traditional? When I go to buyer, I don't expect people doing the, all, you know, to be able to do the, the, the traditional dance. So, and then different kind of questions. What was the influence of the way of the colonial way of thinking and what happened in the post-colonial time? I, I'm always living in the kind of this AG uh, area. Uh, to questions, um, to question all of this uh, journey that is, if we track back what happened in the 16th centuries until now, what happened in the 16th centuries or before in Europe, and what happened in the 16th centuries and before in Indonesia and after 16th centuries. So the uh, Jesuit uh, arrives in Indonesia in 1511. Um, it brought, it has brought, you know, it imprints in through the Catholic and also then uh, through the travel of the Portuguese and Spain, the the journey, the European journey going to East Southeast Asia, uh, slowly. Uh, slowly uh, putting their position into power and uh, finally more than 350 years uh, occupying Indonesia in in many different ways. I think, um, for example, um, there are so many uh, reasons why why um, I tried to avoid uh, the concept of represent- cultural representation. Nowadays, I think we need to think again and we need to have uh, under- more understanding what does it mean cultural representation. In the contemporary world, in my contemporary art surroundings, probably, um, in the visual art, probably it is, uh, it's a little bit advanced, I hope. But I think, uh, my, as far as I understand, in the performing arts, is still not like that. The question of what is Indonesian contemporary art? What is Indonesian contemporary theater? What is Indonesian contemporary uh, dance? is still put in question. Curators are seeking for a form that looks like contemporary, but still they expect that, for example, Indonesian contemporary dance must be something that has a physical or um, uh, has a relationship with its tradition. So that's difficult, difficult for the millennial generation, I think. I'm very much into the um, 
again, um, looking for an uh, area that is between the reality and, and the motivation. So when I approach a traditional, um, traditional art or traditional culture, I'm interested into more into the knowledge rather than the form of it. So when I did the arrow shooting, I learned a Javanese traditional um, archery that is uh, mostly is almost, it was almost disappeared from the from the culture, from the tradition. But recently, it becomes again a very trendy uh, sport, traditional archery, because the uprising fundamentalism. Uh, Islam fundamentalism uh, support the, uh, the, this sport uh, as the, the favorite sport of, of the Prophet Muhammad. So, <laughs> so uh, suddenly uh, the, the members of the group, uh, of the club, of the archery club, they are not wearing um, traditional clothes anymore. They are wearing a complete um, Muslim clothing. Uh, it's very interesting uh, for me because I had to, to also to experience uh, the shifting uh, of, of, of its function from a ritual function um, to um, yeah, belief system. So, I'm also interested into how these how this uh, body as a medium become a medium that is um, that is not solid, that is fragile, but also uh, it is a very primer to uh, to 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 become a mean of expression. Um, this work is about uh, being, I don't know what, nausit, nausea, nausetic. Uh, it's about the limited freedom of speech. It's a very common topic. But um, I like it uh, to to experience how how the how to hold to hold uh, language and to push it into insight. So I'm using it's not ing, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not killing myself. <laughs> I'm not uh, uh, one of uh, performance artists who is uh, torturing bodies. It's a food coloring, <laughs> don't worry. It's a food coloring uh, that I use um, to, uh, to spit. I, I spit the, the color and, and put it uh, and express it into white uh, papers. Why is it so short? Oh yeah, it's only one minute. <laughs> Amnesia is a long durational performance. Uh, most of my work are, uh, most of them are long durational performances. Uh, it's trying between, between two hours to 12 hours, to eight hours a day time, one week or two weeks or something like that. Uh, it has to do with endurance. Um, it's not to become um, uh, the winner of Guinness of Record, but I like to enter the time and the freedom to enter time and to to experience or to share the experience of change. So to see, to be able to see some changes, uh, we need time, and my body needs time to uh, to develop and and to become a, a becoming body. And amnesia is one piece that I um, 
that was inspired by the failing reconciliation that is now is still a topic in my country uh, regarding to genocide uh, events, but not only uh, that happens in Indonesia, but I think around the Second World War or before happened in many, many, many countries. The, the feeling of guilty, the feeling of uh, distance between the history and the presence, and the uh, how do you say transported guilty feeling that happens until today is something that I think um, very special. So I show a black shirt. After one black shirt, I put on and then I went to the background uh, in the wall and I start uh, to mark uh, with with uh, uh, charcoal white charcoal and uh, with chalk not charcoal chalk uh, and say I I am sorry so one by one I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry and it happens, uh, it's a five hours uh, time two days. Documentation is not so clear, sorry. <laughs> Should I have the better fashion? Why don't I understand why? At the end, it, it, uh, the the wall is filled with uh, the marks. So um, I like it when when I work um, to make a performance that people do not think the same like me. So the um, the my task is not to. Um, to occupy uh, the audience mind with uh, the, with the same um, thinking or intention like when I'm doing the performance itself. So I was expecting, I'm always expecting the, actually I expect nothing, but it would be good if uh, people come, the audience come and they develop with their own space of thinking, of feeling, and, and they become themselves too. So some of people remember this uh, as a, like a reminder to her, their mom, some remind them to their lovers, <laughs> some, um, so it doesn't have to do uh, with the history, but just a common uh, feeling of being sorry, which is I, I like. <laughs> Is this a word that? Um, oh no. no. Already thirty minutes. Okay. A work where I, it's called I'm a ghost in my own house, is part of the result of my long, uh, ongoing research on homeless. And uh, homeless in the in various meaning and homeless in relationship with death. I was questioning homeless people they probably have a less fear of death, but it's not true, because the fear of death we have, um, everybody has probably. And so then I go, I went deeper into the research of welfare, of social welfare, and then of what happened um, with the in with the development um, uh, that uh, for example um, like 
how the, the United Nations, for example, measure uh, well-being of the world's member. So that influenced, of course, a lot of uh, program, uh, development program in many countries, especially in the developing countries, to provide people's living. So there are standards. There are standards that probably are not suitable with the original environment of living. Living environment, for example, um, in in the rural, uh, very uh, how do you say, um, natural area. Uh, People live in, in their uh, community with uh, their traditional culture, traditional way of living. And then the government see, okay, this has to be um, changed. People must be civilized. So they put the housing program and, and give the people uh, play, uh, houses to live uh, in, uh, according to the standard of the United Nations. Um, then you qu I question um, to have a home does mean to feel at home. To, have, to be in a home does mean uh, to, to have the feeling of having a home. So um, that's why the title is I'm a ghost in my own house. It's also like to reflect of how, how much I feel I, I belong to a space how much I feel that this space belongs to me. Like this country, do I belong to this place? And uh, our wandering soul as a part of the society member, it feels like a ghost sometimes. And, and so, the charcoal, for example, um, uh, this is a, my common way treating objects um, that I choose for my performance. They are not necessarily um, uh, functioning as it is, and but is, I treat them rather as a symbol or representative of of thinking. And charcoal for me um, is an, is a good material that symbolize death. Death, we, we philosophically, or some beliefs, we um, believe that uh, we are facing uh, several deaths in, my, in our life. That means probably death of an era, death of uh, life phase. Then I broke the grinder. After 12 hours, I look like a ghost myself, really. I disappear among the dark charcoal. So, for example, this uh, has a... Um, I'm dealing a lot with repetition and the concept of repetition that each repetition of course different than uh, you know then they are not the same but the act of uh, repetitive action uh, for me is um, very uh, how do you say helpful helpful or useful <laughs> way of uh, doing for me uh, when 
when the in when I have a time frame or a time a sense of a time in a performance, uh, and then the repetition is a kind of uh, like the uh, organic mechanism uh, to be with the time. That means the repetition uh, produces uh, not only uh, you know it moves me it it moves. Um, my intention or my beings or uh, my intention to become uh, into a place where is unpredictable before. So I never rehearse mostly in my performance. And um, after 12 hours repeated, re repeating, grinding, uh, there is a kind of a, not necessarily a trance uh, situation, but a level where uh, the, the, the time is not very important, that this body is not very important, their presence is, is not very important, but what happened is the merge of, of all the elements. So this, I like it very much, <laughs> and I cannot describe the feeling, it's not my a personal experience, but it's also the energy that is ongoing, moving in the space. And I like it actually very much that it's uh, that this this kind of thing become an idea of an art. It's not an object, a dead object. It's that is for me the the quality of performance art. Okay, um, one more minute. Repetition also for me uh, is a mean to uh, to el not eliminate to reduce the. For example, like this piece, I'm saying I love you. I'm carrying uh, a sheet of tempered glass. Not it's not a sharp glass. It's tempered glass. So when it breaks it becomes crystal. Um, while I'm saying I love you repetitively. So for five hours, I'm uh, carrying this sheet of glass and saying I love you. It doesn't mean um, it's a melancholy romance or, you know, it's about I love you, but it's a, a a world uh, press that people use sometimes uh, in my village neighborhood. They say, I love you to all the uh, my Western friends who come. <laughs> they say, but they don't know the meaning of I love you. It's just a very uh, worldly common um, press that everybody can, can uh, uh, express. But when I repeat it uh, for five hours, then it becomes thousands of I lo or hundreds of I love yous, different way of I love yous. And it becomes, and the meaning of I love you also reduce, and it becomes somewhere or something that is nothing to do with I love you. So um, it has a kind of, it, it leaves a kind of um, substance that um, probably uh, merged with the feeling, between feeling and the energy of the space. I hope I'm not talking too complicated. <laughs> I try to, yeah, to explain. Um, so what people feel or see, um, I leave it to them. So sometimes public come to me and try to help because they think I'm a fragile woman, you know, suffered from love and, you, and love is fragile. And then the empathy appears from the public and they try to help me to, with, with, a, with a glass. And sometimes it's just a beautiful feeling appears. The sound is not working. Oh. 
It's th- uh, how much? Seventy pounds. Yeah. So um, do we have more time, or continue? No, enough. Okay. There are many works that I want to show, but uh, not enough time. But uh, yeah. Um, Mostly, I work with um, space. Uh, I'm thinking about more and more. I'm thinking about the space, the concept of the space. Uh, and even if I have to perform in the landscape, in the open landscape, in the mountain or in the sea, I'm thinking how to not to frame, but how to put myself. Uh, in the right uh, context in that space. So this is uh, one work that I built uh, uh, stairs that goes up to the ceiling. Okay, this <laughs> this last one. <laughs> this one of uh, well, maybe uh, people talk about this work in the social media quite strong and uh, debate about it. Is it art or not? <laughs> or you know. And, When you are a student and you make work, don't throw your work away. <laughs> because this work, for example, also I made when I was still a student. But because of this work, I also uh, uh, I, I could see many parts of this world. This was at the Hebel Theater, now is famous as a How House am Ufer in Berlin. So I'm dancing on a 20 blocks of butter. And the music comes from uh, Makassar, Gandrang Makassar, uh, where I w- work uh, with a musician from Makassar, Deng Basri Sila. And um, I ask him, um, please bring me to have a walk on the street to the market, to the, to the shores. And so he created a kind of a daily landscape from his traditional patterns because uh, the Gandrang play is very uh, limited. Um, uh, I mean, like, the, the patterns are very limited. But it is a music that can be played, like, three nights long, non-stop. Three days, three nights. Or seven days, seven nights. Okay. How old is the day? Sorry? How does the butter dance end? Ah, it ends normal. I like, um, how do you say, how do you say, um, uh, it ends, I show you. (laughs) 
I stop because I don't want to hit my head. <laughs> so I keep as long as I'm still conscious or aware or like at least you know hold, still able to hold the control um, because that's the sense. I'm not going to die on my butter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Malati. Thank you. Uh, and, and, you know, having known your work for quite a number of years, as you say, it's really quite interesting to see how it has developed uh, and changed over the years, and especially in recent years since your move back to Indonesia, mm. how it's branched into, for example, you as a choreographer, mm -hmm. you, in a sense, stimulating the performance of other bodies. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, you setting up uh, your platform of your studio to also train other mm -hmm. performers. But uh, I think it's wonderful uh, that we ended with Butter Dance, something at the beginning, because that is linked to the first question that obviously, uh, you know, I think it's very obvious, but I thought it's quite interesting to, to end and in a sense to start this part with that which is the fact that, that that work when you first see it when it starts happening as an audience you a, a lot of times the first reaction is you find it quite funny mm -hmm. like, like somebody is falling is slipping on butter you know you're dressed quite elegantly or sexily in, mm. in this case but after about like 10 minutes it stops being funny yeah. when you start the feeling that, that the performance starts to pull you in and you get the sense that, oh, this is serious and mm. like you were talking about the music. The music seems to, in a sense, not have a beginning or an end. It, mm. can, it can just go on and you realise that this thing that is happening is just going to go on. Somebody mm. is going to fall. You could hurt yourself. So I wanted to, to start by saying, and you, you started your presentation on, on this thing about the teachers that study, uh, you know, that you studied with and, and how you train. I think it's very interesting because, you know, back in Asia, one of the biggest things that we always have to tell students in art school is performance is the most difficult form. Mm. It sounds very easy. And I think Malati's practice is quite interesting in that at points in time, you really begin to see what is the result of the training. Mm. So I want you to say a little bit also about, because you once told me one of the things you learn is how to fall, mm -hmm. how to fall. So all these uh, things that you, what in terms of the physical practice yeah. itself, what was the training like but, and what was the objective? Is it simply just so that you can endure or, or something else? So different mixtures mm. of, of uh, uh, techniques, of course. Um, uh, it's nonsense if you say uh, performance art does need to be to have a technique. It has mm. to be like that, as uh, your body as it is. Of course, uh, it's not a dance or a theater that you have to have a certain uh, ideal figure yeah. figures. But the, the training, the specific training, the physical training I'm using until now is the, the influence of the Bhutto training. Mm. And uh, the influence of Bhutto training, training, which was that I learned from Ansu Furukawa, was like the line of Daraiku Dakan and Akajimaro and Hijikata. So this is quite hard. There are a lot of falling, a lot of. Uh, how do you say, like to hold, to hold the body not moving and then controlling the breath. So if you do yoga, you understand, mm. like uh, you control your breath. If you do Tai Chi, also uh, you control your breath. Uh, but um, also like the mind. So there is, um, I meditate. I, I learned meditation since I was 11. Mm -hmm. I think my parents was confused because my mom was sick and <laughs> my father was busy. So the, the way to control my teenager time is to put in the meditation. <laughs> <laughs> I was the youngest, <laughs> of course. So uh, your parents were the one that put you in yeah, to learn meditation. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I obey, of course. Okay, meditation. 
And um, I was the youngest, and I'm still practicing this uh, in the in the com meditation community, the Sumara community. community mm. And I'm still one of the youngest. <laughs> that means that means the the community of this uh, Sumara meditation is fading out. <laughs> But I think uh, the relationship between meditation and uh, the Javanese Sumara meditation yeah. and the Bhutto practice is very much connected, through, uh, according to my experience, because uh, Sumara is very much into the detail of your inner organ too. Like the relaxation uh, practice is letting go. Sumara means surrender. Surrender means that means you have to have the uh, ability to connect with the, your inner organ, and then, and then when it's all settled, relax and and surrender, and then probably you can meet the more the higher energy or uh, something like that. So this kind of uh, practice, mm. I also uh, uh, similar. Uh, met in Marina Abramovich practice, mm. which is cleaning the house, where we were brought to the South Spain or in the Normandy or in the, uh, you know, Cargenac is uh, north of Paris in winter time uh, for two weeks uh, fasting without eating for two weeks and only drinking water. Um, sometimes herbal tea and uh, not speaking at all. So we did training, we did a lot of meditation, we did the breathing training, we did the uh, concentration uh, exercise, uh, we walk uh, fast, we walk slow uh, for the whole days around um, uh, circling the lake and you go back to the to, to bed and still not eating. <laughs> and that's for almost two weeks. And so I wonder uh, that my life is probably a little bit funny with my background. And then I went to Europe and then I met the, the Serbian teacher who is teaching me, you know, all this kind of exercise that is uh, in Java, for example, is common to become a uh, to become um, like more spiritual, you mm. have to do some lakoni, means like some exercise that is uh, uh, meant to strengthen your mental. Like we have uh, uh, darkness fasting, so you don't go out for 35 days inside the room that, uh, and you don't have, you are not supposed to see lights. So this darkness or uh, white fasting. Mm. You only eat uh, uh, rice with a uh, little salt and drink water for one month. Uh, this, this, we have uh, this kind of you sleep under the bed. Mm. Uh, you know. What was the what was the objective of of this type of exercise in in Java? Yeah. Uh, to to it's part of uh, technique or exercise to become a. Um, Shaman, for example, mm. or yeah, so mm. like to someone who has a, a mental strength, mm. yeah. Then was it, was it the same in in the the sort of European training? In Marina Abramovich training. Yeah. Uh, maybe she's not aware with it because her. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, she's aware about that so <laughs> because her, a lot of her methods about healing and this kind of thing. So. Um, she compiles different techniques from mm. strain from India, Ayurvedic, uh, Aborigine, and mm. and uh, Tibetan. So different, and also like uh, Balkan techniques. Mm. So I think, um, in terms of uh, um, mental state, yes. uh, it, it was not an initiation to become something, but. But she, um, it, it's true that uh, cleaning the house means you're cleaning your body. Mm. So for, I also, everybody was wondering that we still survive because we don't eat for two weeks. Uh, but I think the most uh, absorbing 
activity is really speaking. Mm. <laughs> If we speak a lot, we are very often get very often easy becoming easy tired. Yes. So it's really interesting that that you your from your cultural background, you know, you are exposed to certain kinds of practices. Yeah. But when you actually were in your as part of your formal training. Yeah. That means in in art school, basically, it's interesting that what you were taught also has a kind of similarity yes. or some sympathy and empathy yeah. with that. So I think what's that really intrigued me in in a sense that in in this kind of practice, and if you look at the training, that really it's very. Uh, syncretic, mm -hmm. and even though we talk about being culturally specific, it is culturally specific. But at the same time, there is a kind of, uh, you know, connection across cultures, and a, a kind of even if the names are different, there is a kind of empathy towards yeah. different types of practices. And it, like you say, it's not really about producing something, an object, but yeah. but more like a kind of building, a kind of capacity yeah. to do things. And I, I think that partly sort of explains also the intensity of especially your long durational yeah. kind of practices. You know, so so as and I think the videos will give a very strong sense of that, particularly by the time of of uh, I'm a ghost in my house, yeah. uh, butter dance, as well as of course I love you. I think it's it's very very emblematic of of that mm -hmm. that kind of of thing. And I like this uh, concept. That this is art. <laughs> it's not yeah. a theater. It's not a dance. Yeah. It's the art of doing. The art of yeah. you know. It's a happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, And it's expressing. Yeah. I think what you seem to be doing, especially when you look at "I Love You," is expressing a kind of life. Yeah. You know, but that, and part of it, I think, is the endurance and the the challenge of that act of you know keeping afloat the yeah. glass. You know. When we begin with uh, when you when I choose performance art, someone told me, "Okay, you're not going to be rich from your art <laughs> because then one you choose because you are not selling anything. Yeah. You're not uh, there is the f yeah you don't know how to sell that time. Yeah. You know nowadays yes I know yeah. <laughs> because I think I think uh, uh, we can't all be marina. <laughs> no, because uh, I think. Uh, we also our performance artists need to survive too, mm. and there is a way also like to to deal with the the uh, market. Yeah. Not I mean the relics. Uh, yeah, the relics or the documentation, or you know, like the uh, yeah photography. Yeah. yeah. Even though I think the market has caught up with even performance as yeah. a form, even though historically performance. Art, because of its nature, because of its process-driven nature, yeah. and also the f the fact that it's ephemeral was always, you know, seen as one of the last of the the so-called pure yeah. artistic practices, you know, which cannot be easily commodified yeah. or or, 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 or commercialised. But I think, you know, as you say, the market has caught up and found a way yeah, also to deal with that. After 20 years, I think, okay. Uh, is there a way, <laughs> you know, like something <laughs> like, oh, okay, you know, because, um, yeah, I think I think uh, that's a difference than uh, when you are just begin your career in performance art and then you create a performance art for sale. Mm. You don't even know uh, or sure about the about the uh, uh, the genre you are doing, mm. but you want to make. Uh, commodified mm. uh, object uh, or work mm. and you make a uh, addition immediately of your performance and I think that's a bit dangerous yeah. so I think we have time for one or two questions from the audience the gentleman there and then the lady could you stand up and just uh, say your name so they, yeah and there's a mic coming through my name is Steve and uh, I would like to come back to the beginning of your presentation where you showed the video of the archery. And when you spoke, 
during that time. You talked about the greater culture, the greater Indonesian culture in which the archery had a very strong component in that culture, a uh, historic mm -hmm. component. So my, my question is, 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 the, is that historic context or is the meaning of the archery obscured when you take it out of the context and put it uh, uniquely by itself as performance art, is that, is that greater meaning, is the depth of the meaning obscured when mm. people are just watching this component without a context? Mm. And related to that, what is the meaning for you of the very slow movement mm -hmm. during that time? Thank you. Very nice question. Thank you. Um, I, I made it. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, um, decided to use uh, uh, archery as um, part of the doing of the performance and uh, the object that I'm using, the tool that I'm using, uh, because of course it relates to a survival uh, survival tool uh, from the ancient time. And uh, after the stone time, I think uh, the stone age, we, the, 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 the archery is one of the um, main uh, uh, tool to for hunting, hunting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what I like is uh, the reflect of our modern audience. <laughs> they are still afraid. We, there is a sense of danger. Yeah. There is a sense of danger when they are with me in a space, and and. Um, the, 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 the action of, uh, of the sh arrow shooting is, is still giving a feeling of insecure, uh, dangerous, so they move always behind me. When I start like this, and then the people reflectively are moving behind me. So this is uh, actually, um, for me, interesting uh, to see that uh, that uh, this kind of uh, reflect uh, sense, yeah, reflect sense or reactions uh, to uh, such a situation is is working. So, what was the second question? Uh, Why slow. Slow. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it needs. To, I need to move slow to keep my focus because this object is dangerous. It has a metal. Thing. It's a real weapon. Yeah. 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 I think what you don't see in the video perhaps is that the space is an enclosed yeah. space. It's actually not a big space. So I think part of the view, you can see the audience literally is yeah. <laughs> constantly moving every yes. time you are yeah. you you are moving and it, it you do feel quite tense. Yes. Uh, being there with the artist also because we don't actually know where you're going yes. to next, and yeah. and you were and 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 it's a long performance yeah. of uh, like what you said, seven hundred arrows, eight hundred, eight eight hundred yeah. arrows, and I mean at least in the version in Singapore, you shot until your fingers were yeah. were bleeding, so you know you had all these red <laughs> blood <laughs> yeah. on, on the floor, so the sense of danger, I yeah. think, and, and that part. That's interesting because it it's not so much a cultural kind of variation in terms of culture, but a very yeah. innate sense after a long period that there is this very potentially very dangerous yeah. act going on, and you are sort of locked in this yeah. room with the artist. Even. But yeah. somehow I am aware to keep it uh, decent yeah. and 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 and. Quiet and in, in frame, you know that yeah. that is not like just uh, playing dangerous. It's different than than being as it is. So uh, that's why uh, because I care people who come, then I have to be careful and I have to keep my focus uh, in shape. Mm. 
course. And the, yeah. there's a, the lady? Me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Jessica. I wanted to ask, I was very excited about the moment, Malati, when you were talking about merging through repetition and the merging of objects and people and other things, energies in the space. Um, but also you mentioned that you don't practice these uh, repetitions beforehand. Mm. So I was wondering if you could talk about your experience of that merging um, in your practice, mm -hmm. you know, what, what that entails for you and when you experience that. And um, the second question I had was about how you see yourself in the context of Indonesian performance art. Um, very different, two maybe totally different questions. It's okay. Uh, Jessica is my collaborator. <laughs> I know her uh, from Indonesia only for a short time, but I've been knowing her name, and so that's... I invite her to collaborate with me for the new piece that will be performed day after tomorrow. And Jessica comes from LA. She studied also uh, many uh, techniques of singing, included the Javanese uh, traditional singing. Um, in terms of merging, it's very interesting for me because it, I can say that because I experience. And uh, through, like, when you do mantra, uh, like, I come from a tradition where uh, Muslims, uh, when it was still much done, now less done, less happened, like a ceremonies uh, uh, with, uh, the, like, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, you know, like, like that Sufi, Sufi kind of mantras, but also because I'm Buddhist, I'm, and get, oh, um, 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 a lot engaged with uh, repetition man, mantra of mantras, um, and it, it gives you like the it brings you into a space of mind and that in, into uh, something that is um, how do you say not uh, not having a, a specific substance. It is substance, but it has no picture. So, uh, how, how can I explain it? It's like, everything becomes like, not floating, but there is there. It's an, become a, maybe I would say like a, a piece as an energy that is uh, uh, compiles, yeah. yeah. I think, and, and in, in the spiritual world, uh, that is a mean not like to connect with the, mm. the higher spirit mm. Mm. or something. Like the, the, the kind of, not, not distance, but the kind of separation yeah. between things become less obvious. Yes. And instead, the, you are thinking of the whole thing as a whole and you part of, you know, wherever you are at. Yeah. Yeah. So the repetition, like in many rituals, also uh, gives you the ex the physical experience that your body is not like now, like yeah. when you are in aware, total yeah. daily awareness. Yeah. So it, it, the the consciousness is in in a different level. Yeah. So so I think that partly sort of it's not a complete explanation, but that partly hints at one of the characteristics that as the visit or the audience of the visitor you 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 see when you see long durational yeah. performance which you seem to get this sense of a kind of almost like he i won't say heroic but a kind of like quite extraordinary feats mm. you know of 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 endurance or intensity that that is going on but i think that is only possible you know, when that you have a kind of mental mm. focus and endurance Probably, as yeah. well. Yeah. Because, yeah, the, the, ex the body experiences differently also. Yeah. Than yeah. The inten if the intention is there, like, uh, like when you are fasting also, like the, the body follows your intention to, to do the, to finalize the yeah. fasting, but but uh, it has a certain uh, ch a process of change, and this is a very special, I think. Yeah. 
And me in Indonesia as a performance artist in the performance art environment, of course, um, uh, in the beginning they say, yeah, I'm not Indonesian artist because I'm not the product of Indonesian art school. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Western artist. In, in Germany they say, I'm not German artist, I'm Indonesian nationality. So uh, that's not so important now because I think um, the appreciation uh, on performance art is still very limited. There are not so many artists doing performance art. Uh, but now, um, like in Bandung or in Jakarta, there are younger people uh, more and more uh, doing a like, kind of a conceptual performance um, that probably, I think, yeah, another kind of uh, practice that, that follows, you know, like what is now becoming trend also. Since uh, Anna Imhof received uh, Golden Lion, and you know, like Tino Sega received Golden Lion, and then young people also like are getting more interested into oh, performance art can be in Finnish Biennale, and it has been already a long time ago. Like uh, John Jonas or yeah. other performance artists have been there, but uh, now uh, the interest is coming. Also, what is becoming, you know, like now the art fair also show performance art. So, so probably economically is a hope. Maybe, but for me, <laughs> I think if I get money, I thank you, God, thank you, people. If not, I would never. Before, I never think about having money, making money from performance art. That was maybe a mistake. <laughs> so with that, uh, we have to end tonight's uh, session. So uh, please come and see uh, the performance on October seventeenth. It's 3 to 6 p.m. and October 18th at 5 to uh, 8 p.m. Entrance is, is with normal gallery admission to the, the museum. So it's this week. Uh, please uh, do come. You can buy your tickets here or online and you will see uh, for yourself a, you know, an actualization of the things that Malati has said. Uh, what she said, uh, presented in the video documentation, but it's a it's a new work with her two uh, collaborators. Yeah. yeah, may I say some words? Yeah. So in the beginning, uh, Bonhui uh, told about that um, my I, I was doing a, a sleeping laboratory yeah. and interpret my dreams, but in the process I changed and I felt like it's not uh, me centric about my dream, and so I. Um, because I'm also inspired by uh, uh, Francisco de Goya's uh, print, uh, The Sleeps of Recent Produces Monsters. And so I, I uh, begin to collect dreams from people. And so I think then I interpret their dreams with the help of uh, technology. <laughs> it's the first time I'm working with scientists <laughs> and technologists. <laughs> And a singer that is, you know, also working with uh, waves, body waves, brain waves, heart waves, right? And so, um, please come. Uh, it's, it's a little bit different than otherwise of my yeah. performances, yeah. but there's a lot more technology. Yeah, yeah. and 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 accompanying the the performance, there will be also like a video and and the uh, an animation that uh, documenting the process of making. Yeah. So please come and thank you, Melati. Thank you. <laughs>